so good morning good afternoon and good evening to all the uh, respected panelists uh, uh, respected participants and delegates uh, i uh, dr sachin chempe uh, welcome you on behalf of uh, this acns yns webinar series uh, which we are conducting on every second and fourth sunday at uh, this same time and which is dedicated especially for the for the education of young neurosurgeon and especially for the young neurosurgeon from the low resource country today uh, we have yet another uh, interesting uh, webinar wherein uh, we have the uh, ahara from japan and uh, the wine speaker is uh, my dear friend uh, dr wan du khan uh, from uh, uh, vietnam and uh, along with that we have our uh, uh, chief veteran professor uh, joko pato uh, president of acls and the chairperson uh, uh, dr gustavo uh, jung who is the uh, uh, head of neurosurgical department at imc brazil and who is also a member of our young neurosurgeon committee and uh, along with that we have two discussants uh, one is our very dear friend uh, professor fawad pirdat the chief of neurosurgical society of afghanistan and a young uh, dynamic neurosurgeon uh, 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 from latin america dr nujerling vargas and along with that uh, we have dr ben and dr liu who is my co moderator so i welcome you again for this interesting webinar today so before we start i would request professor yoko kato to say a few opening remarks and then we'll start the webinar well, hi everyone uh, japan is uh, uh, 7:30 pm now so thank you very much for joining uh, the today's asian spines uh, the webinar uh, the the chief uh, speaker is kawahara sensei uh, from uh, kawashima uh, uh, very uh, from Kyushu Island. So he is very good at uh, uh, CSF. Uh, some pathways. Uh, some uh, he, he he is going to talk about that. I think uh, also the Dr. Ha uh, from Vietnam. Uh, he is a very hardworking person, and I know him a uh, very intelligent. So I I'm very much looking forward to the two lectures today. So thank you very much. thank you very much professor so uh, i would i would uh, uh, introduce our first speaker a short introduction and we'll spend more time on the discussion hi sachi professor gustav are you there yes gustav yeah. could you say few opening remarks yeah uh, just a correction the head of my department is professor ricardo ramina okay 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 sure thank you uh, so uh, our first speaker allow me to introduce our first speaker uh, professor takashi uh, kawahara who is the director of uh, no normal pressure hydrocephalus center at uh, atsuchi neurosurgical hospital japan and uh, who is going to talk uh, with us on the introduction of surgical technique and proper management of programmable valve to prevent complications of lumbar peritoneal shunt cerebrospinal fluid dynamics as revealed by thoracic spinal mr imaging so i welcome uh, sensei kawahara could you please share your screen and uh, start your uh, presentation please okay thank you for your introduction i share my screen i start my presentation hello everyone it's good to see you today i'm takashi kawahara it is a great honor to be able to speak to you before i start i'd like to thank professor yoko kato for giving giving me this opportunity My hometown Kagoshima city is south of Japan and Kagoshima city is famous for its active volcano Sakurajima Island This is a picture of Atsuchi Neurosurgical Hospital Today I'd like to talk about post operative complications of LP shunt then I'd like to share with you a useful idea of our recent study. 
My talk is divided into four parts. First, I'll talk about LP shunt or INPH. Second, I'll talk about complications of LP shunt, especially abdominal pasta migration. Third, I'll talk about another major complication, over drainage. Finally, I'd share the idea of our study, which modified Monroe Kelly doctrine. I shall speak it. I shall be speaking for about 40 minutes. If you have any questions, please leave them until the end of the presentation. Then I'll be happy to answer them. Okay, I'll talk about LP shunt for INPH. I emphasize that LP shunt is surgery developed in Japan. Dr. Nobumasa Kuana inspired this method by the failure of the epidural anesthesia. And many Japanese neurosurgeons have modified it. The research group of the Normal Pressure Hydrocephalus Society of Japan, including Professor Hiroaki Kazui of Kochi University, proved the good effect of LP shunt on INPH in the March Center Prospective Clinical Study, Symphony 2. This is one of the figures in this paper. Three months after LP shunt treatment, LP shunted group more improved than the conservative treatment group. Modified ranking scale improved at least one point. In addition, the average of Japanese is small. So I think it is suitable for LP shunts. Until now, patients of INPH has been treated with three types of surgery, VP shunt, v VA shunt, and LP shunts. 55% of INPH patients are treated with LP shunt surgery in Japan after the Symphony 2 study. This is a surgical manual of LP shunt edited by Dr. Kuwana, published in 2006. In this manual, general anesthesia is recommended for LP shunt. At the Atsuchi Neurosurgical Hospital, where I work, LP shunt surgery has been performed in all cases under local anesthesia since 2007. So in our hospital, the number of LP shunt surgeries gradually inc increased and 96 cases last year. I also go to the other hospitals for surgical instruction. Gradually, more and more hospitals began to perform LP shunt surgery under local anesthesia. And I became one of the authors of the new manual published in this year. Our LP shunt procedure can be watched on this website video. Next, I'll talk about the complications of LP shunt. This is a table of complications in the Symphony 2 study. 
because of a minimally invasive study, there are no serious compli complications. But LP shunt has the weakness of high frequency of post operative minor complications. At the period of the Symphony 2 study, the most common complications that required the operation was subcutaneous migration of the abdominal caster from the peritoneal cavity. Post operative rupture or fracture of lumbar caster is serious complication required the operation, although the frequency is about 1%. And the complication of largest frequency is over drainage. At first, I'll talk about the subcutaneous migration of abdominal caster. Radiographic examinations disclose the presence of caster coiling in the abdominal wall. This incidence was 5 to 10% at the period of Symphony 2 study. Examination of the abdominal CT reveals that almost all the migrated caster uh, exist in the subcutaneous area. We recognize that the caster had moved and migrated in the sub subcutaneous space, which was made by the surgical procedure. About 10 years ago, the strategy for preventing migration was to fix the caster firmly to the rectal muscle and muscle fascia. We invented the simple method to prevent this migration, published in 2013. The abdominal caster is pulled into the space between the subcutaneous fat tissue and the anterior rectal fascia. The abdominal caster is passed obliquely through the anterior fascia and rectal muscle, and then introduced into the space over the posterior fascia of the rectal muscle. Insert the caster into the peritoneal cavity and close the anterior seas. Then, very short caster might, might be observed in the subcutaneous space. It is very simple. We call this technique penetrating rectal muscle method. For completely covering the caster, which was slightly exposed in the surgical field, we cover the caster with around the tissue by using Z suture, which was presented by Dr. Samejima of Tokyo Kyosai Hospital. The abdominal caster is no longer exposed in the surgical space. This very common complication has decreased to almost 0%. We, recommended, we recommend the penetrating rectal muscle method and Z suture. In fact, this method does not fix the caster anywhere. Therefore, it can be easily pulled out if necessary, for example, in the occasion of shunt infection. Next, I'll talk about another post-operative operative complication, 
which cannot be solved by now. It is a lumbar cluster fracture or rupture. There are two places where the cluster can be frequently damaged. One is around the spinous process or vertebral arch, and the other is around the connector to the bulb. We examined how to connect the cluster to the connector. There are three types of cluster rupture around the connector. Slipped out, damaged on the connector, and damaged at the end of the connector. We compared the technique of connecting a caster to a metal connector in vitro. Picture A is the technique with finger. The others are the technique with tweezers. Picture B and C is the technique connecting caster with tweezers grasping on the connector parts. After the caster was completely inserted into the connector, the area of connection was observed with a magnifying glass, magnifying glass. The damaged or cracked area are highlighted and counted using penetrant method. Each procedure was performed five times and the number of cracks was compared. The silicon caster was damaged only when the connector portion was gripped with tweezers. The molecular, molecular st structure of silicon caster is helical. The stretched area is easily damaged with localized forces. Don't touch the silicon caster on the metal connector with scissors. The silicon caster should be better connected with fingers as it can be applied gently. Okay. Lumbar caster rupture is one percent frequency, not so many. The most common and serious complication at present is the condition of orthostatic headache, subdural edema, subdural hematoma, sometimes require surgery, the over drainage. Next, I'll talk about another major complication, over drainage. This is the typical findings of over drainage after LP shunt surgery. Also, static headache occurs with decreased CSF volume. In the Symphony 2 study, total events of minor and serious complications are approximately 30% after LP shunt. CT and MRI sometimes reveals subdural edema or subdural hematoma. This is an abdominal X-ray of patient emitted immediately after LP shunt. To avoid this complication, programmable valve placed in the course of the system. This is one of the programmable valve we use in LP shunt surgery. It is divided into the three parts, reservoir, 
programmable valve and anti siphon system. And this valve can be set to the highest pressure over the 40 centimeter H2O. This flow chart is our management of over drainage after LP shunt surgery. Initial pressure is highest setting. And uh, one week after surgery, when the patient has no over drainage symptom, we will decrease the valve setting. When the over drainage appears under virtual of setting, patient should be bed rest as soon as possible. When the over drainage symptoms show improvement, the programmable valve will be, would be gradually set lower. And, uh, and we recommend the additional tandem valve method when the over drainage would not be reduced despite the virtual of setting. This is an intraoperative picture of tandem valve method. A skin incision is made in the flank. The abdominal caster is transected once and an additional valve is connected in tandem. Dr. Madoka Nakajima of Chuntendo University has reported an operation using two valves from the beginning. And we are referring to this procedure. The gravity valve is connected vertically to the caster. Here is a post-operative X-ray. With this additional tandem valve method, over drainage has been resolved in all cases so far. By the way, as the Symphony 2 study revealed, a lot of post-operative patients have symptoms of over drainage. How long should we force patient bed rest in such cases? When should we decide to do additional tandem valve method? And how long should we observe the patient until the over drainage improved? It is easy to diagnose over drainage with the finding of ventricular narrowing, narrowing and subdural hematoma. But when there are little intracranial findings change, the patient is forced to bed rest for a long time. I'd share the good idea of our study, which is useful for SIH and over drainage diagnosis. One day, I realized that the over drainage after LP shunt was pathologically similar to spontaneous intracranial hypotension or SIH. Spontaneous intracranial hypotension SIH is a condition of subnormal intracranial pressure, not associated with apparent causative events, such as trauma, lumbar puncture, or surgical intervention. 
patient with SIH primarily present with an orthostatic headache, neck pain, dizziness, tinnitus, and virtual disturbances. It sometimes leads to disturbance of consciousness. The characteristic findings of SIH on cranial MRI are dural enhancement, chronic subdural hematoma, subdural effusion, and downward displacement of the brain. Floating dural suck sign or FDSS is the characteristic findings of SIH on spinal MRI, which are described in Japanese guideline. Spinal dural suck is looked like floating in the epidural CSF which was leaked from dural sac. This finding is named because of its similarity to the CT findings of aortic rupture. The aorta looks like to be floating in the hematoma. However, the characteristic clip Cranial MRI findings are not always present at the onset of SIH. And I think that the findings of spinal MRI are phys physically and hydrodynamically incorrect. For example, this patient complained of orthostatic headache due to SIH for three days. But MR images appeared to be normal findings. We here report the characteristic signs of SIH that are found on thoracic spinal MRI. These signs disappear after success successful treatment with an epidural blood patch. And these signs are also useful for the overdrainage diagnosis after LP shunt. This is a multi-center retrospective study that was performed at Kagoshima University Hospital, Atsuchi Neurosurgical Hospital, and Kagoshima City Hospital. From 2014 to 2020, we analyzed 27 consecutive patients with SIH symptoms who received epidural blood patch. The mean age of the patient was 49 years old. All of them complained of orthostatic headache. The median time from onset to diagnosis was approximately 18 days. These are the spinal MRI this weighted image of healthy volunteer. Spinal cord exists in the middle of the spinal canal. This is a thoracic spinal MRI in a SIH case. In this image, we can see four findings. First, the white arrow, anterior deviation of the spinal cord and the blue arrowhead, anterior shift of the posterior dramata of spinal dural sac. We named these findings dural sac shrinkage sign or 
DSSS for short. In addition, the T2 fat suppressed image must be observed. We can see some fluid in the epidural space and the venous dilation of, the, of this epidural space as shown by the red arrow. We can see Patterson's venous plexus in the spinal epidural space as indicated by the red arrow. The treatment of SIH is epidural blood patch under the fluoroscopy. I'd like to show two cases, two patients of the typical cases. A 30 year old woman presented to previous physician with sudden headache. There was little dural enhancement, like a red arrowhead, no hematoma, and an enlarged pituitary gland. Therefore, the previous doctor diagnosed a pituitary apoplexy. She was treated quickly, but the pathological diagnosis was lattocate crept cyst and did not improve headache. Since the nature of the headache is orthostatic headache, the patient was transferred to our hospital. DSSS findings with anterior deviation of the thoracic spinal cord and anterior deviation of the dura behind the thoracic spinal cord was observed. The symptoms improved with EBP. Post-treatment MRI showed the DSSS has, had been disappeared and the thoracic spinal cord located in the middle of the thoracic spinal canal. This is a case two. 53 year old female presented to our clinic on the sixth day of onset with the orthostatic headache. These are the picture of Miero CT of this patient. There is a spread of contrast medium from the intravertebral foramen at the cervical thoracic spine. This is a cervical thoracic MRI of this case. You can see the anterior deviation of the thoracic spinal cord as shown by the yellow arrow and anterior deviation of the dura mater as shown by the red arrow and the venous dilation in the spinal epidural space as shown by the blue arrow. And T2 fat suppression image shows a fluid component in the epidural space. Furthermore, you can see the extra vertebral fluid between the cervical spinous processes as shown by the asterisk. After the epidural blood patch, dural sac shrinkage signs or DSSS are disappeared and the fluid signal between the cervical spinous processes in the asterisk have also disappeared. Next, I'd like to show the results of our research. Only about 50% of SIH cases present with typical findings on cranial MRI. Therefore, 
the diagnosis SIH is difficult. And our median time of uh, median time to confirm the diagnosis is 18 days. Diagnosis of SIH is difficult even with cervical and lumbar MRI findings, and also difficult with RI and Miero CT findings. In contrast, the thoracic spinal MRI revealed an anterior deviation of the thoracic spinal cord in 96% of cases. And the dural sac was close to the thoracic spinal cord in 81% of cases. To validate the usefulness of the DSSS, 13 experts evaluated the titrated image of 23 patient in this study, as well as those of 28 healthy volunteers. Positive predictive value and negative predictive value are over 90 percent. In other words, this study confirms that the DSSS findings increase diagnosis accuracy of SIH. We propose a unique pathophysiology of SIH. When the CSF leaks out of spinal canal, the amount of CSF in the dural sac decreases. Then dural sac shrinks. And the result, uh, as a result, the epidural space in the spinal canal becomes negative pressure. This causes the penis plexus in the epidural space to dilate. It is important point. Thoracic curve is constantly kyphosis. Shrinking spinal dural sac becomes to straighten, and it seems to be approaching vertebral side. In the early stage of the SIH, we can find DSSS in the thoracic spine. And the cervical, uh, several weeks later, brain deformity could be found. Since the pathophysiology of overdrainage after LP shunt and SIH are similar, DSSS is also occurring in the condition of overdrainage. This image of thoracic spinal MRI can be additionally obtained within three minutes after the cranial MRI scan. Therefore, it is relatively easy to confirm the presence or absence of DSSS. Thoracic spinal MRI can determine whether post-operative overdrainage is serious or not. DSSS is useful to determine whether additional tandem valve method is required or not. And the result of our study also modified Monroe Kelly's doctoring. Monroe Kelly doctrine is an important theory. The sum of volume of brain, CSF, and intracranial blood is constant to maintain intracranial pressure. About 200 years ago, Dr. Alexander Monroe, an English anatomist and 
physiologist and Dr. George Kelly, a surgeon, realized that the sum of intracranial brain tissue, CSF, and blood is constant. And when a brain tumor or hemorrhage happen to be exist, CSF and blood volume would change accordingly for keeping intracranial pressure constant. This theory was a fundamental principle and unchanging for 200 years. We propose that the early stage in the uh, SIH DSSS mechanism minimize the intracranial deformity. Several weeks later, brain deformity could be found. Monroe Kelly doctrine considered only intracranial aspect. And the modified Monroe Kelly doctrine include the intracranial and, uh, and intraspinal aspect. And we, uh, we also propose that early stage of over drainage and after LP shunt, DSSS mechanism minimizes the intracranial deformity. Several weeks later, brain deformity for example, subdural hematoma could be found. It is a great pleasure for us to modify of the important theory that has been unchanged for, for almost 200 years. Finally, DSSS is the new findings of secondary he headache on MRI. I'd like to talk again. DSSS can be seen before the intracranial changing in SIH. In our series, we confirm these findings the day after onset. Even though there are no changes on the cranial MRI, even if there, there are no abnormal findings on cranial MRI of patient complaining headache. The traffic spinal MRI might be confirmed abnormal findings in some types of headache. For example, in this SIH case I presented earlier, there are no abnormal abnormal intracranial findings, but the thoracic spinal MRI confirms DSSS. Our research is not over. We are planning several derivative studies. For example, we study of the morphological brain change of idiopathic normal pressure hydrocephalus. Many doctors of Kagoshima University contributed to this study. This is the last slide. LP shunt is minimum, in, minimum invasive procedure for INPH treatment. Penetrating abdominal uh, ab Abdo abdominal rectal muscle method with Z-suture is simple technique for preventing abdominal caster migration. Post-operative overdrainage is the most serious complication and it might be solved by additional tandem valve method. We found the characteristic findings DSSS in thoracic spinal MRI for SIH and over drainage diagnosis. We modified Monroe Kelly doctrine. Thank you very much for your attention.
Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Professor. That was uh, definitely an interesting talk and uh, a new concept of uh, 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 CSF flow for the young neurosurgeon. Uh, I would request first our chairperson, uh, Dr. Gustavo Jung, to please uh, make some uh, comments about uh, uh, the talk. Dr. Gustavo, are you there? Uh, yeah, yes, I'm here. Sorry, as I told you, I am on my way to Germany and, and my internet may not uh, be working properly. But first of all, I just would like to congratulate by your uh, nice lecture. And it, it, it brought us some uh, straight uh, of we are uh, supposed uh, very obvious uh, very objective <laughs> so thank you for your presentation. thank you thank you very much dr gustavo i uh, uh professor fawad pizzat our uh, discussion for today's session is there who's the chief of geosurgical society of afghanistan professor fawad pizzat may i request you to make a uh, few comments about Professor talk and tell us about uh, how do you manage the cases of uh, uh, normal pressure hydrocephalus and uh, uh, about your experience of lumboperitoneal shunt in Afghanistan. Uh, okay, thank you, much. thank you very much. Uh, Salam alaikum. Uh, hello, greeting and kulichiba for everyone. Uh, namaste. Thank you. Uh, congratulations for nice and best presentation and very uh, good finding. It was obviously good, and uh, especially for uh, FDSS and DSSS. And uh, the other things that uh, they use and uh, presented modified monocular uh, doctrine. It's also uh, interesting, it was really good. Congratulations uh, again. Thank you very much. And uh, the findings are uh, obviously good. Uh, but in Afghanistan, we uh, managed normal pressure uh, hydrocephalus, uh, but ventricular uh, peritoneal channel. Unfortunately, we haven't lumbopirated a chance in Afghanistan. In previous uh, uh, webinars, we discussed this uh, uh, subject with you and Professor Kato uh, told us that in the future, they will send us some uh, lumbopirated a chance as well. And uh, this uh, mid-pressure valves that, that we use for uh, putting VP shunt and uh, unfortunately until now, we haven't programmable shunt in Afghanistan, uh, but our results are uh, good. We uh, face with uh, uh, orthostatic headache and uh, sometimes uh, with uh, deteriorated and subdural hematoma that's uh, uh, two or three cases that uh, we uh, operated, we faced with uh, uh, acute and uh, subacute subdural hematoma that we evacuated, uh, evacuated, but unfortunately they collected again and again, and it was uh, make a complicated uh, case. And uh, uh, in the, this uh, uh, for, Sometimes, you know, for uh, uh, normal pressure hydrocephalus, we, uh, the, the one, the diagnostic and also the indication for operation is to do, uh, doing uh, LP or lumbar puncture. Sometimes after lumbar puncture, our patients uh, complicated and uh, com uh, complain of headache and maybe uh, some uh, le uh, CSF leakage and we must uh, do uh, blood patch as Professor told. This was really good. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, 
the complication of ventricular penetration and uh, now it's rare in Afghanistan. And we hope that's in the future that we can help and uh, that uh, our police and professor Kato, we uh, have um, some uh, long political chance as well. Thanks very much and congratulations again for this such uh, a great presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Pawar uh, for your comments and for your participation. Uh, you can see two hand raised. Uh, so, Dr. Ben, if you want to ask anything. Uh, yes, and uh, thank you, uh, Professor uh, Takashi, and uh, and congratulate uh, on your on your research on uh, the uh, MPH and also the uh, the I have three questions. So the first one is uh, about um, uh, it's about the design of the the tandem valve. So uh, when you need to use those uh, tandem valve, so how would you uh, defend? How you how would you distinguish clinically whether there uh, the the valve uh, is uh, functioning or not. Uh, how do you differentiate those uh, with proximal or distal blockage? And uh, and my uh, second question is about um, the technique of the epidural patch uh, in your institutes. So because sometimes uh, we we cannot identify the 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 leaks on the MRI, or maybe we sometimes identify multiple leaks on the MRI. So uh, how would you, um, uh, uh, how much uh, autologous spot uh, will you inject and to which level would you choose? Can you share some uh, tips on us? Uh, on us? The first question is that uh, I see you, uh, have, um, I saw your presentation and uh, you have uh, excellent research on the, uh, on the uh, spontaneous uh, intracranial uh, hypotension and uh, and possible relationship with uh, mountain uh, sickness. How about, uh, for example, uh, scuba diving? Uh, do you uh, do you have any experience uh, with it? Uh, thank you so much. Uh, ben, maybe you can repeat your questions one by one and be more clearly. Can you ask the first question? Uh, yes, the, the first question is about uh, the uh, when you use those uh, tandem uh, valve, so how would you differentiate clinically about the proximal or distal blockage? And uh, the second question is about the technique. Well, one of, by one, please. Ben. One, one by one. ただ先生。じゃあ、1番目のご質問のお答えをお願いします。1番目が何だったですかね。まあ、ひいけな、アンダースタンド、そう、プリーズ。あ、いや。え、the あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ、あ
So how much uh, blood uh, would you inject and uh, which level uh, would you uh, inject? Okay, I understand your question. Uh, we do, we always do a double uh, site blood patch, a cervical thoracic area and lumbar area. Uh, we use a half blood and half serine uh, free, uh, liquid. And we use the uh, 20 milliliter uh, at the uh, cervical area and uh, 40 milliliter for lumbar area. So maximally we use uh, 60 uh, milliliter fluid uh, for one um, EBP. Understand? Yes, yes. Thank you so much. Uh, sorry, I, no, I'm no, not no, good no at problem. the English. <laughs> no problem, no problem. It's very clear. Thank you so much. No problem, Professor. Thank you so much for uh, asking and participating, uh, Dr. Ben. I had seen one more hand raised. Barakatullah Muhammadi had a question. He had a hand raised and then he took his hand down. Dr. Barakatullah, you want to ask any question? Please introduce yourself and then ask question. You have to unmute yourself. You are muted. Uh, you, you are muted. Uh, Professor Firzad, can you tell him to unmute? I yes. first I am no, we... thinking from you and Dr. Firzad about the connection in this program. I am Dr. Burkatala Mohammadi from Herat, Afghanistan. I am very happy to uh, uh, see this program. It was very uh, important for us in Afghanistan. Uh, I am neurosurgeon. I am chief of uh, neurosurgeon in Herat, uh, Afghanistan. Uh, we are. I hope is to uh, continue this program because it was, was very uh, important for us to training and for Terini and trainer also. Thank you very much. Just to Dr. Firzat uh, asked me for my question. Thank you very much. Dr. Mohammadi has and thank you very much. Uh, and thank you for all our colleagues from Afghanistan that's attending uh, and participating in this webinar. And uh, it's uh, day by day increasing. Uh, thank you, Sachin and Professor Katu as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prisa. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, arigato gozaimasu. Arigato. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Actually, today we have a very good participation from Afghanistan. Dr. Rihanna, the uh, female neurosurgeon, Dr. Ahmad Faisal, Dr. Ahmad Danish. I can see a lot of uh, people from Afghanistan, Dr. Muhammad Bakir Sayyid. So thank you very much for the active participation. We really appreciate it. And we'll try to help you for the uh, for the lumbo for the shunt, for the lumboperitoneal shunt and ventriculoperitoneal shunt. Thank you, Professor. Uh, Sachin, uh, Sachin, maybe you can tell them about uh, October, the Congress, the date. Yes. Okay, uh, so on 13th of October, we are planning to have uh, one, uh, uh, our ACNS uh, uh, Congress. Uh, I'll just share a video of... Uh, thank you very much for your invitation, uh, ACNS Congress. Thank you so much. So yes. I wish you a very proud uh, investigation of the patient, Dr. Kawahara. Thank you very much. So that was a promotional video for our uh, 13th ACNS uh, Congress, which will be uh, in Shanghai and on 28th of October, Pakistan and uh, the other YNS colleagues also to please send uh, your abstracts 
uh, for the paper presentation. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, is there any other question? Dr. Benson, uh, Dr. Rihanna, Dr. Mishari. Yes, Dr. Achmad is there from Indonesia. Hi, Dr. Achmad. Hello, thank you. Thank you, Sachin. Uh, thank you, Prof. Kato, and thank you, Prof. Uh, Fawad, and all other, other uh, professors. I want to ask uh, Professor Kauhara, uh, after we implant the LP shan, how we check the flow, the flow of the shan? Uh, because if we put the chamber uh, at the top of the uh, rib, at the top of the rib, it is difficult to press the chamber. Yeah, sometimes we difficult to check the flow. It is uh, good or not the flow of the shan? How is that? If, do you have any tips how to check the flow to make sure there is Still good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for your question. Uh, perhaps your surgical procedure uh, for uh, uh, placing uh, bulb uh, is yeah, relatively uh, deep. So you you can't check the uh, uh, flow by using pushing reservoir. Uh, if you uh, uh, check the flow uh, for such cases, uh, you, you have to uh, do uh, shantography. Uh, in our hospital, uh, shunt travel is not so many uh, because uh, with many uh, cases, uh, but uh, when uh, ventricular size is not uh, small and uh, high convexity a sulcus uh, is not change. Uh, we uh, do shantography uh, uh, for checking a block uh, 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 of caster. Is it okay? Uh, it means sorry. Doctor. It means that we we inject the 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 contrast to contrast agent to the chamber yeah, yeah, of the yeah. sun like that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Thank you very much, uh, Doctor Rahmat Pad. Seeing you after a long time. Nice to see you and thank you very much for participating in the discussion. Is there any uh, question? Uh, Dr. Benson, you, you, had a, you want to say anything? Yes, good morning. Um, this is Mabel. I'm a neurosurgeon recently uh, graduated in Ghana. Um, I don't really have a question, but I just wanted to congratulate um, the speaker. It, it, what he presented was really interesting and it's one of the things I'll probably look at um, trying to add to practice and see whether it will make a difference here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for participation, Dr. Mabel Benson. Dr. Mabel is the first lady neurosurgeon from Ghana. So thank you very much for participating. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much for your comment. Thank you. Is, is there any other question or uh, uh, shall we move to our uh, next agenda? So uh, I would request uh, uh, Sensei Kawara to stay with us. Uh, we have another uh, with us.
Congress, uh, who's from Vietnam, this uh, committee, and who's going to be um, in emergency situation. Uh, so I would request uh, Dr. Han to please uh, kindly share his screen and start his talk, please. Yeah, um, uh, um, first, I want to say uh, uh, a big thank to Professor Joko Kato to uh, give me this opportunity to talk talking about uh, treatment of uh, uh, ruptures, uh, ruptures uh, AVM in my center, and uh, thank you, uh, Sanchin and Dr. Liu for the coordination. And uh, uh, as you know, that the AVM is uh, estimated to uh, prevent a less than ten for uh, in uh, one hundred thousand in the population, and the rate of rupture is uh, two to uh, five percent per year and uh, uh, the the rupture uh, is uh, the the most common clinical manifestation uh, up to uh, 70 percent of the presentation and uh, in a cut of rupture AVM uh, the early mi microsurgical assistance is usually avoided uh, in my center normally uh, the doctor waiting or uh, one or two weeks uh, waiting the the cooling time and after that doing the uh, surgical treatment for the patient the waiting for the patient recovery the hematoma liquid function and uh, uh, decrease the inflammation and uh, maybe it gives them more time to prepare and study the angio architect of the AVM and uh, they have time for the uh, uh, pre-operative embolization and uh, and uh, the discussion about the uh, timing of the uh, operation is now is uh, uh, remain uh, controversial uh, uh, in the world. And uh, with the uh, development of uh, the multimodal treatment, the like surgery, uh, pre or post uh, operative embolization, and radio surgery. Uh, uh, is a uh, uh, in the international literature recommend in general uh, the rest period for four weeks uh, among one or six weeks between the the rupture and the for the uh, conclusive achievement for the disease so in our center uh, uh, Vietnam is uh, not very uh, developing country in neurosurgery and we have very few center we can perform uh, so the uh, operation for the uh, uh, the lesson that like AVM and um, and the, the patient come uh, come from uh, different uh, center in the province uh, in other province uh, my center we care about uh, uh, the half of the population in Vietnam is about 60 million person and uh, in Hanoi, we have only two or three centers we can perform AVM surgery. And uh, the patient come us in uh, any kind of condition, and uh, some, uh, some of them uh, we have to perform uh, emergency surgery. We can we cannot, uh, wait for the elective surgery. Um, when, the, when the patient has a big hematoma with a significant mass effect, and not uh, possible to maintain the patient with a normal ICP or maintain the uh, uh, serial perfusion. And when the patient has a progressive neurological uh, deterioration. So, uh, uh, normally uh, in our center, almost uh, the AVM lesson Rupture or not, uh, they do pre-operative pre uh, embolization. And uh, but, uh, the, the operation uh, uh, in the early time can be considered for, uh, for, for, for uh, the lesson we consider that is simple, which are not very uh, with high risk for operation. And uh, I, I uh, read uh, some article in PubMed and we talk about a uh, favorable outcome for uh, with CAIP surgery in uh, early time for ruptures AVM. And uh, uh, my uh, presentation is very short. I will talk about uh, 
small cases I do. I, I did in my center. This is a female, uh, 18, 9 years old, uh, come with a which uh, hemiplegia with a uh, Glasgow 10 point. And we can see the uh, doctors, uh, uh, the um, spontaneous uh, intracranial hematoma in the parian lobe uh, open to the uh, uh, ventricular system. And uh, in the angiography, uh, CT angiography, you can see the uh, uh, diffuse AVM in the frontal, frontal parietal lobe and uh, with uh, the feeder from the MCA and the uh, deep, uh, deep uh, drain vein. This, uh, in, uh, this AVM located in open area, so can you see uh, uh, this has a three point of spelomatin sketch. Uh, and uh, I uh, performed this operation for this case. Uh, in uh, uh, MSC uh, situation, I don't have um, neural navigation, so I try to open the very big craniotomy and I try to uh, identify the sun curve as a cortex and uh, starting to open the sun case. And after that, I try to uh, remove uh, uh, the, uh, a little bit of uh, hematoma to uh, uh, relax the brain. And after that, I go surrounding the lesson. The hemotaxy for the fetal artery is very difficult because it's, uh, uh, is a diffuse I I don't have very clearly a uh, feeder. So normally I using on um, the clip as uh, a temporal clip for for sorry. I I using the temporal clip to have for for the uh, emotasi. After that I correlation and I take out the clip again because a uh, direct uh, emotas uh, with the bipolar to the feed the other is very difficult and I go throughout the lesson This is this, a uh, very diffuse AVM. We cannot see the nidus very clearly. So I was trying. I will get I using the temporal clip. Uh, just like the third uh, by plug with uh, six or four, but color depressor is very, very difficult. So, let's see now. Listen again, and uh, this is the deep part of the niders. And after that, I, I press the drain, drain vent. And uh, take out the event. Normally, after uh, touch all the big connection, uh, all the connection with them, the, the lesson collapses. And, like, and uh, this is a uh, port operative CT scan and uh, angle CT. Uh, uh, so, hematoma. Uh, we totally uh, evacuation. Yes, a bridge uh, hematoma, uh, a small hematoma remain inside the ventral system and cut uh, out all the AVM information. Uh, the patient I did uh, one month ago and right now the motor, uh, the um, neurolo neurological deficit is uh, been recovered. Not this. I need more physiotherapy. K2 is a uh, May seven years old and uh, uh, with sudden headache and uh, in the city. So, again, we see the 
hematoma in the paralog and open to the ventral system. Uh, he, uh, he come with hemiplasia, but the four day, the uh, constant decrease rapidly with no cells, vomiting, and we have to perform the operation. And uh, in the angio city weeks, we can see the very small AVM. Uh, uh, the feeder from the ACA and the draining in the saprocytan sinus. And sorry uh, for the case, it's quite early. We uh, put the EVD for relax the brain and hematoma uh, equation uh, and cut the AVM poison. And this is the all of the angio city and uh, this child recovered very well. Uh, we did this case uh, more than one year and right now he can do everything without uh, a neurological defect. And uh, this is uh, the third case, uh, May uh, 64 years old, uh, computed in the third day with uh, Glasgow 10 point. We can see the um, uh, big IBM in the uh, occipital lobe. And in the RST, we can uh, see the uh, feeder from the PCA and the MCA. Uh, uh, MCA. Uh, normally, uh, this case uh, for selective, sorry, we perform the embolization for the deep feeder, the like the PCA. Uh, the MCA uh, feed, uh, the, from the MCA is uh, more easy for the to the control, but the deep deeper part is challenging. But uh, in the MC surgery, we cannot do the embolization, so we perform perform surgery. And for this case, we we uh, take out to totally the lesson also. I, uh, I, 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 for this case, because the uh, uh, big feeder, I left some uh, uh, permanent clip uh, inside the brain. Yeah. So, uh, so give a small conclusion that uh, early surgical treatment uh, is a brief arrival following for the uh, ruptured IBM spells in China and uh, uh, simultaneous hematoma equation and AVM excision uh, is a uh, is good option. Strategy for small subcell AVM with uh, very clearly angio architecture. Yeah, uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, I hope uh, I can hear our opinion from the uh, professor and uh, our colleagues. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Han for uh, showing an interesting cases. Actually, that is a very difficult uh, topic and difficult surgeries for the young neurosurgeon, but you're doing extremely well, I must say. I would request, uh, uh, I'm not sure Dr. Gupta was there because uh, he had to catch a flight. Uh, I would request uh, Dr. Uh, Ahmad Fawad uh, Pirzad to say a few comments about uh, Dr. Handum's presentation and a few comments about uh, IBM surgeries in Afghanistan. Uh, Dr. Fawad, is that? Yes. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, congratulations uh, for a uh, nice presentation and also good achievement. It was uh, very good. And uh, also, the Vietnam is like Afghanistan is uh, low. Uh, and middle income countries and your achievement be proud of you thank you very much it was very good and uh, um, uh, we hope that some <laughs> some days we also reach in this position that you uh, doing operation like this and it was good and uh, uh, for the timing and uh, uh, doing uh, putting clips uh, that's sometimes it's controversial and uh, the to doing early uh, surgery uh, sometimes it's uh, controversial as well but uh, you did uh, well and uh, nice cases and good uh, and best achievement uh, congratulations again thank you very much it was good uh, and uh, for uh, your second question about Afghanistan, that's uh, 
unfortunately, the uh, cases come to our centers in uh, capital and also in provinces, like a, a spontaneous intracranial hemorrhage. That's uh, the uh, reason and also the sources uh, at the first not known because the patient suddenly become uh, ill and uh, but, uh, unconscious and uh, uh, they transfer to the uh, emergency department. And when they do, uh, doing a CT scan, they diagnose as a spontaneous intracranial hemorrhage. Uh, just we managed who's uh, Hematoma are bigger than 30 milliliter and uh, also it extended to uh, ventricles and the uh, patients become deteriorated. We and Midland ship we evacuated by doing uh, sometimes EVD uh, evacuation by catheter or uh, evacuation by uh, to me. And uh, unfortunately, uh, at the first, we haven't. Uh, um, chance for uh, CT or MRI angiography. And uh, when patient recovers, then we send them for angiography. But unfortunately, uh, we have the possibility of putting clips in Afghanistan or endovascular uh, neurosurgery. It's uh, not possible uh, in Afghanistan. And we uh, only evacuate the hematome, put the EVT, and uh, management conservatively. Uh, but uh, uh, our uh, early evacuation of hematoma, our result is good, but uh, you know, there's also our ICU uh, situation is also uh, unfortunately not good, but uh, uh, we uh, doing our best for our patient and uh, uh, we hope that someday we have the uh, instruments, also equipment, and uh, for doing and clipping uh, EVM uh, operation and also uh, other kind of uh, uh, reason or uh, for intracranial hemorrhage like aneurysm uh, uh, ruptures and also uh, EVM rupture. But uh, but uh, nowadays we doing uh, only evacuation of hematoma and putting EVD. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Prof. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Pawar Uh Is there any other question from the panelists, Dr. Ben? You want to ask anything? Um, yes, uh, congratulate uh, on your presentation is, uh, uh, and, your, uh, and your work in a low, uh, low income country setting. So I, I have a question about the AVM uh, in both in Vietnam and Afghanistan. So uh, sometimes for difficult we have to think about the radio surgery. So uh, may I ask uh, 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 Dr. Han and also uh, Professor Ashman, so how how uh, uh, is there a problem in arranging the referral to radio surgery for treatment of AVM uh, in your country, uh, namely in Vietnam and Afghanistan? Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, uh, thank you, Dr. Ben, for the very good question. In our country, uh, we have all the options um, for the AVM treatment. Uh, uh, until now, we don't have to very uh, strongly concern our society for which cases we do the surgery, which cases we do embolism, which cases we do the radio surgery, because um, uh, our society is very not very strongly unification. So uh, up to uh, a very each center, they have their opinion and they they um, they put a protocol to do uh, everything. Uh, in our center, uh, uh, radio surgery, uh, we uh, because we have a very good outcome with surgery and embolization. So radio surgery, we uh, only for the uh, uh, unruptured cases, uh, deep AVM uh, in the functional eloquent area, 
so yeah, it's very deeply to perform the survey. So we we send the patient for the radio survey. Yeah, it's my question. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Han and Dr. Ben, uh, for participating. Uh, is there any other question from the panelists or delegates? So, Dr. Ha, so thank you very much for a nice presentation. Thank you very much. Yeah. So, the all three cases are very difficult. So, how, how you can judge of the eloquent lesion uh, in your institute? So, eloquent ABM is the most the difficult yeah uh, broken yeah case. Uh, 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 normally uh, uh, for the uh, adapter IVM in eloquent area we don't uh, we only observe uh, the less than profit mostly um, for molly cases but uh, for the uh, rupture cases uh, yeah uh, especially um, when a person has neurological deficits we can uh, explain the family because the expectation is very important. We can, uh, because uh, uh, for uh, even for the uh, uh, person with a CEO, with a several headaches and uh, and the AVM in uh, eloquent area, um, we have to explain family. That's so the surgery can cause uh, several uh, uh, consequent uh, the like. Uh, 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 neurological uh, defects, motor defects. So uh, 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 normally, process uh, don't recommend surgery for this case And uh, I uh, I only can perform when it's uh, rupture cases and the uh, the the hematoma compress and cause uh, uh, cause motor defect. So I can I can explain to the family. And if they uh, accept the surgery, we do it. Profit, yeah. But uh, for elegant area, it's very, uh, um, yeah. It's it was, uh, it's, it's not highly recommended surgery for all, all the cases. Yeah. Yes. So the how you can judge the elegant lesions? My, my question, uh, because there's some functional MRI or uh, sometimes can you do in, in your institute? Uh, yeah, yeah. Prof, uh, for uh, for elective surgery, we have a. Uh, uh, ETI, uh, tractography uh, for identify the relaxation of the AVM, the hematoma with the uh, with the uh, functional area, and uh, uh, right now in our center we can do a work surgery, but for only glioma, not for AVM rupture AVM for glioma, uh, and sometimes uh, metastasis in the eloquent area. And uh, 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 normally, uh, in the elective surgery, I have uh, neural navigation, and with that, I can identify a little bit uh, the eloquent area. And um, uh, functional monitoring during the, um, the the surgery brain mapping, we don't have profit. We we only have monitoring for the uh, the spine, some um, uh, spinal tumor for um trauma for the uh, seven nerve but not for the brain yeah thank you prophet yeah sometimes uh, the you encounter the uh, diffuse avm yeah not uh, localized one diffuse yeah. AVM. how do yeah. you treat for just observation yeah, prophet, uh, for me uh, uh, diffuse avm is very challenging compared with the compact nidus it's a compact nidus uh, with embolism sometimes we do it just like the tumor but when the the, the, the few night uh, nidus is very challenging, and uh, uh, in the first case, uh, the feeder is diffuse. So there are some uh, eight or ten uh, um, uh, small branches from the uh, 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 the MCA uh, come to the nidus, and uh, and I I this emotasy for the vessel is very very challenging. It's very difficult. I can uh, take the um, the control with the bipolar, and uh, in uh, in our center, some professor using a mini clip, uh, clipping this uh, small uh, vessel, but uh, in this patient is very poor. Uh, and they uh, he, he, he cannot pay anything, so um, uh, I I cannot use any clip for this person, and even uh, I use uh, the suture for how the burn flap without any and any plate profit and <laughs> this very critical patient so um uh, I, I 
I, I do my best for help the, the, the patient. So, but um, for me, um, Andina Profess uh, diffuse AVM is very, very challenging. And uh, sometimes I reject a lot of normal tissue. It's outside of the Yeah, it's-, it's Maybe, maybe it's I, yeah. I think radio surgery can help, I think. Yeah, yeah, perfect, yeah. So in, in a, a Hanoi area, that, that you, do you have a, a radio surgery or? Uh, yeah, perfect. Uh, uh, right now in Hanoi, we have uh, uh, like emolization, we have radio surgery, but uh, they, they do everything. That's like uh, archive lesson, not uh, especially for uh, neurosurgical disease. So it's not very, very professional, but I hope in the future, I, I will send young doctor to Japan to learn from the radio surgery and em emolization also. Bro. And we have uh, I think uh, we will we'll improve better in the future. Yeah, bro. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, uh, excellent yeah. talk. Thank you. Uh, Sachin? Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Han. Actually, it's, uh, if I can say it, it, it takes a great courage to present AVM and aneurysm study in, in front of Professor Yoko Kato, who herself is uh, uh, one of the legion of this particular kind of surgery. I had one opportunity to assist one AVM surgery along with Professor Yoko Kato when she had come to India. And I must tell one thing she gave me, uh, 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 one learning point that reading uh, uh, your angiogram is very, very important. So you, we must take a long time in reading our angiogram and deciding our strategy. And also in intraoperative uh, 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 IR800, that's endocyanin green injection. So reading another angiogram on the brain, that is also very important. Uh, Dr. Benson is there uh, from Ghana. Dr. Benson, you want to ask any question? Yes, please. Thank you. Um, thank you for the presentation. Um, here in Ghana, mostly we we don't have uh, we don't have a lot of vascular surgery ex expertise um, and then support. We also we have an interventional radiologist who uh, does some of the some of the cases. The cases that come to us most of the time come with a severe intracerebral hematomas. And they actually report late. My question is, um, in your environment, for those that report late, what um, what options do we have? Here, most of the time, we tend to do conservative management for such cases, and then they later get evaluated for uh, the course of the bleed. I was wondering what happens at your end. Uh, sorry, uh, I, I I can hear very much about the question of Dr. Benson, but uh, I I think uh, I think uh, uh, in uh, uh, for example in uh, Vietnam, profit not uh, not every center can do IVM surgery. So normally they can uh, do the um, uh, decompressive craniotomy and even uh, only hematoma evacuation uh, for the patient and. Uh, and in, in some cases, uh, uh, I heard about very good outcome is the patient recovery. Uh, they saved the patient um, uh, and uh, 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 only with hematoma equation and cryotomy and, uh, 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 and after that, uh, they send the patient for the other uh, center uh, with uh, uh, supra, supplementary, um, supplementary treatments like uh, emulation surgery or even radio surgery. Yeah, it's it occur in Vietnam also, bro. Yeah, not uh, every IVM case is a do surgery. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I have one question for Dr. Han. Dr. Han, what's your, your opinion about normal uh, perfusion pressure breakthrough. Do you think, uh, do you agree with that, this concept? And uh, if you agree, then uh, in case of AVM with ruptured, uh, have you ever observed normal perfusion pressure breakthrough after the uh, evacuation of hematoma and the AVM? Uh, uh, Sanchi, can you repeat the question? Sorry, uh, the connection is not very good in, in, in my hope. 
my my question my question is about normal perfusion pressure breakthrough is yeah. an entity uh, used uh, after the abm surgery when yeah. uh, wherein uh, uh, because of the yeah so I do you it. agree with normal perfusion pressure breakthrough uh, or uh, uh, yeah yeah uh, sanjit uh, th thank you <laughs> very good question uh, sanjit uh, uh, normally um uh, during the, the, the surgery, uh, I, I talk with the anesthesi for the maintain the, the normal blood pressure for the patient, normal. Uh, uh, and uh, but uh, uh, after surgery, uh, normally uh, um, uh, we we test we test we increase slightly uh, the blood pressure for for pre prevent the post operative rupture. Because uh, with uh, 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 some cases with very low blood so, uh, blood uh, pressure during surgery and after uh, operation, the the patient react uh, reacting with pain with uh, irritation can uh, increase the blood pressure and co cause uh, post operative hematoma. So uh, we do that for the uh, for the uh, test uh, for the final of the surgery. Uh, but normally, uh, the, for um, for the uh, intensive in care for the AVM rupture patient, we use the normal blood pressure. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is there any uh, question uh, from anybody or any uh, comments? Uh, we would request uh, Sensei Kuara to make a few comments about uh, the presentation of our young neurosurgeon, Dr. Han. Uh, Sensei Kuara, could you please say something about Dr. Han's presentation? Okay. Uh, good, uh, great presentation. Uh, the uh, surgical video is very great, and uh, fortunately, uh, our hospital has a, a neural navigation system, so uh, evacuating hematoma and uh, remove MM is in. in Acute stage is relatively uh, easy, uh, but uh, <coughs> ABM is uh, several uh, uh, difficult uh, problem uh, containing. Uh, so uh, good luck. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Thank for you for your pre yeah. presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Sensei Kumara. Uh, any other comments or any uh, question or any doubt uh, from anybody before we uh, go for it? Uh, uh, Professor Pawad, do you want to say anything? Oh, okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for uh, organizing uh, such webinars, especially for uh, young researchers and for us as well. And uh, I just like... Uh, Discuss with you. We, uh, we uh, also discuss by mail about the training in India for the Afghanistan young neurosurgeon, the short program. And uh, uh, Professor Katu also uh, previously promised about the uh, uh, LP shunt, and that's uh, how to uh, organize this as well. And also, uh, could you uh, share the link of ACNS uh, Congress in China as well? And uh, if it's possible, that's we, I propose, and uh, if you and also Professor Kato agree, that's uh, for uh, young neurosurgeon who participates in webinars, uh, if uh, we distribute them uh, certificates as well, that's then uh, that's uh, they encourage uh, that encourage them to participate uh, more and more. Uh, it's my opinion, not uh, but uh, like a proposal. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you very much, Professor Pawar. Yes. Uh, uh, 
So of please, course, please, please, Professor Pato. Yes, so of course we can accept the young neurosurgeon from Afghanistan as many as possible, I think. But I think uh, they should bring the, their topics, please. Okay. They should have uh, the preparation of the topics. Okay. Is it okay? Yes. Then, uh, okay maybe Sa yes, Sachin uh, will tell you the uh, Shubin's email. He is organizer, one of the, the top organizer of the uh, October meeting Congress. So just you can communicate with him directly. Okay. Okay. Let's touch him, please. Hi. Yes, yes. yes. I will. Uh, I will send all the details to you, uh, Professor Fawad Pizar, and definitely will give the certificates for all the participants participants to encourage them uh, to have uh, more participation in the future. Thank you. Thank okay. you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, there any other ukraine ukraine uh, i forgot his name but uh, just please inform to him as well yes yes i, I will inform uh, the ukraine president uh, uh, of neurosurgical society of ukraine yes uh, so uh, before we close anybody want to uh, say anything or uh, make any comment not, uh, I would request uh, uh, Professor Yoko Gato to say a few uh, closing remarks to encourage young neurosurgeons uh, before we close. So uh, I thank you very much for the two talks. The both are very high uh, level, especially Professor Kawahara, that he uh, uh, showed us his uh, research work and uh, that, that was accepted uh, neurosurgery, Dr. Kawahara. Your yeah, paper has uh, accepted neurosurgery or GNS or mute not demas. Today's presentation was already published uh, after neurochirurgical and uh, <coughs> over the uh, research. Uh, submitted already, but uh, next uh, uh, study, but not yet. Okay, so the, we wish you the uh, further the investigation of the uh, NPH, please. And also uh, uh, from Vietnam, uh, it was uh, the challenging cases, all, all three cases was very challenging, I think. Uh, uh, maybe in the future, I think very sophisticated treatments uh, uh, combining endovascular and the intraoperative imaging and also radio surgery. I think uh, ABM yeah. is uh, at one tenth of the aneurysm treatment. So I think not so many cases. So just you can study for each, for, from each cases, please. The, yeah. And also, uh, Professor Prasad, thank you very much for your uh, the joining today and bring uh, so many young doctors from Afghanistan. Thank you. Uh, Arigato gozaimasu. I <laughs> so they, can, they can study uh, our two uh, presentations. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, thank, you. thank you very much, everyone. And uh, we'll end our today's webinar. Thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. Thank you, Prophet.